Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to speak to you today and to conclude this session on the urgency of 2030. As we speak, the pandemic is still wreaking havoc across the world, and we're all consumed with worries about our loved ones, our health, our jobs. But when it comes to the potential for international climate action, I'm actually rather optimistic. The first year of the European Green Deal has definitely not been an easy one, but the green transition that we had already planned for Europe has now become our roadmap for recovery on top of that. The pandemic dominates day-to-day -day life, but the climate and biodiversity crises remain a clear danger. The droughts, the wildfires, the floods, storms, the viruses, they're all harboring as if worse to come. This is a reality no one can hide from, and even die-hard fossil fuel fans now admit the end of their bonanza is in sight. There is a simple but fundamental choice to be made. Do we continue on the path we know by growing shareholder dividend on the back of slash and burn economy while poisoning our air, seas and also our lungs? Or are we ready to embark on a new path of sustainable growth in a clean, circular and inclusive economy where health is wealth instead of the tally of GDP indicators? For our recovery from COVID-19, Europe has made that choice. The European Commission is working to make Europe the world's first climate neutral continent by 2050. When we set our target, we were the first. Now, only one year later, global momentum for climate action is growing. China has set for carbon neutrality by 2060. Japan will become climate neutral by 2050 and South Korea carbon neutral. In South Africa, similar ambitious steps are taken. I also look forward to working together with the incoming US administration and my good friend, John Kerry. In the European Union, all of our policies and strategies are driven by our 2050 target. We are working to enshrine this target into law. We challenge everyone to beat us, to beat us to it. In a global race to zero, everyone's a winner. In the next couple of months, we will prepare the legislation to support our climate targets and deliver regulatory consistency and predictability. But make no mistake, what we will do on the emissions trading system on renewable energy in the automotive sector, all this imply deep changes. It's gonna be bloody hard, but it can be done. Since 1990, the EU's combined GDP has grown by over 60%, while net greenhouse gas emissions have fallen by almost a quarter. Moving ahead on climate action does not mean a return to the past. We will be developing clean tech, precision farming, and new energy sources like hydrogen. So in every sense of the word, this is a leap to the future. Across the world, we're about to spend enormous amounts of money to build back better. We should not waste this money by locking ourselves into soon-to-be obsolete technologies. It would be a dereliction of duty if we invest in sectors with a limited future, only to create stranded assets and economic problems later on. Let's focus our recovery on our common future instead. This is exactly what we intend to do with Next Generation EU, our common response to the recovery needs of Europe. And in support, the European Investment Bank has taken bold steps to become Europe's climate bank. The green finance it will provide will help accelerate our green transition. We could not be doing this without the EIB. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, this is not about saving the planet. The planet will do fine without us, as it did before. This is about a healthier and better life for all of us. It's about saving humanity.